I think a wise man once said, if you ain't assessing, you just guessing. I'm pretty sure that was Plato. Um, uh, go ahead. <laughs> you know what? That was Plato. Yeah. He's either him or Socrates. What would Plato uh, do? Is that like a new track or something like that? <laughs> what would Plato do? <laughs> John goes crazy. Uh, <laughs> to push some performance jt what's good man everything's good bro oh i'm here chatting having a combo <laughs> like that i like that positive I'm energy i'm here i like that i like that positive energy a lot i'm gonna I'm need some of that i'm gonna feed off of that I'm that's what i need give it. that's what i need in my it. life just a giver <laughs> oh my goodness um excited excited to dive into this one today i know we talked about it a little bit on the first episode um but getting into exercise selection uh getting in and out of the weeds and hopefully coaches can walk away with a simple process or ideas to how to create a simple process for them to now choose exercises um based on an actual purpose and <laughs> we'll get into that uh, mm-hmm. a little bit more but you you originally brought this topic up of something that you thought like this would be dope to talk about especially early on so I'll give you the floor a little bit but but why why this topic why this topic i think exercise selection is fun it's fun as a coach mm. to learn new ways uh of movement yeah uh, it keeps us as coaches engaged um speaking on my behalf and if you're a coach listen you're like i'd like to keep things simple keep things basic i challenge you to to look at those exercises even a push-up is very complex for a lot of people so i think defining what simple and complex is bro stop challenging the first me. step stop I'm challenging that too bro. <laughs> stop challenging uh, me let me live at the end of the day it's it's okay what is simple and what is complex and that's going to be very dependent on the person in front of you right so yeah i think going back with exercise selection which i think we we Personally, speaking on my behalf, it's, it's, it's good to see a variety of what can be done with the human body uh, yeah. with the certain implements uh, that are available, uh, knowing that there's new stuff that's being made every day. Like, okay, now how can I not get bored with my things if that's something you're thinking about? Yeah. Um, and try a new variation that I, did not, I was not even aware of that might actually help the person yeah. in front of me. Yeah. So I think that's that's the first thing that comes to mind. Uh but yeah, what are your thoughts with selecting exercises? I I, I love the love the fact that you brought up just, just like straight up like that it's interesting. Like I, I can't quite put my finger on why, but like few things get coaches more fired up and paying attention faster than talking about exercise selection. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. Uh, again, also gets people arguing like crazy in the comments yeah. and stuff. Like it's, it's just like the mo. I, I don't know why this topic, um, but also like, it, it's an area where I think like it's easy to go wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. Or it's easy to not um, have a, a set in stone process. So like, I, I think it, it, it's definitely something that hopefully we can add some value and, and help out the, the the coaches in the field. So thinking about our, our experience, maybe us as young Phil and JT, or thinking about coaching coaches, coaching interns, right? The people that we work with or the coaches that we work with daily, where do you see people go wrong when they're, they're selecting exercises for their, for their clients, their athletes, whoever it is. I think if you, If you don't have an assessment of some sort of the individual in front of you and you're already looking for exercise selection, I think that's where you can go wrong. Mm. Like, what are you looking for? Yeah. If you don't know what you're trying to solve, why are you trying to solve a problem you don't even know? Dang. You know what I mean? So I think for me, I'm, I'm, I'm talking... Based, I'm speaking based off of my own mistakes. Like, yeah, I remember not too long ago, I was like, "All right, what's some, what's some nice exercises?" Like, that's the wrong question to ask. It's yeah, yeah. It's what are some exercises that can help with the intent that I have, based off of some assessments uh, that I've made 
and assessments could be like, oh, my guy does not look good in squat. Why? Mm -hmm. All right, let me look for some a variety of exercises to help with that intent of trying to help this person squat look better. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the first error is that what is or what type of exercises can I do is like the wrong question to ask uh, first and foremost. Yeah. No, I, I yeah, I, I, it's not where I thought you were going to go, but absolute ball. <laughs> um, where was, where was I going to go? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know anything now. I, my mind is now gone, but that was, that was, I love that. Like I think a wise man once said, if you ain't assessing, you just guessing. I'm pretty sure that was Plato. Um, uh, go ahead. <laughs> you know what? That was Plato. Yeah. He's either him or Socrates. What would Plato uh, do? Is that like a new track or something like that? <laughs> what would Plato do? <laughs> John goes crazy. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, I, like, I think there was a bar in there. But yeah, there's a bar in there. There's a bar somewhere, somewhere, somewhere deep in there. But like, not to get into the weeds on like what assessments you use and like what's better or worse. And like, please don't come for us, FRC people. Please don't come. Please for do. Us. Please do. At least me. Yes, people. Go for JT. He wants to I'm smoke. I'm here to argue. I'm here to learn. I'm telling you that. He, but... we, we, we want all to smoke. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I, and I'm like, again, immediately thinking about like, should I have written a program recently where I haven't assessed anything? Like someone's like, yo, can you write a program? I'm trying to, you know, put a muscle. Bang. Here it go. And like, like, yes, a lot of people are going to get similar programs with similar movements and similar loading schemes and parameters and things like that for sure. Like if your goal is hypertrophy, if your goal is speed, there are certain boxes we have to check. But like specifically speaking to exercise selection, like you said, are these movements serving this person best? Like from their own capacity standpoint, like when you talk about the sliding scale of complexity, like a push up for someone who's never trained before can be extremely complex. Like it's really hard for them to coordinate that movement. And they might not even have the ability to get into those positions. Right. Not, uh, not under any load. Right. So facts, facts, yep. like that, that assessment piece now becomes like a, uh, your just learning about the person in front of you. Like mm -hmm. what can this person do? And now like Plato said, I don't have to guess. Now I have some, <laughs> answers i have more information about that person in front of me yeah yeah i i think through assessments too we, that word alone could probably get us in trouble which i i want to get in trouble <laughs> i think smoke. assessment is literally just looking at somebody yeah in the sense of movement right like you don't have to have you don't have to go through F and fms you don't have to go through a, a specific screening to have an assessment but somebody walks in to your room and they say, train me. And you're like, all right, that you go through squat. That's your assessment. You're looking at yeah. all the things that they're doing right or the things that they could probably do better um, on the next one. And based off of that assessment, now you're, you know, going through the exercise selection, you know, thinking about yeah. Play-Doh. All right. You got to have an assessment, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and then like, I mean, that, that gets into so many other, like within the assessment, I was talking about the conversations you have. And what is your onboarding process for a new client or a new athlete? Like, are you asking them what things they like to do, what things they hate to do, what things they've done in the past, what movements right. they like, like how, like how much information, like, can you get more valuable information about this person? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And again, like you said, like assessment doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be force plate. It doesn't have to be individual joint. Uh, again, FRC people, I know you're furious at us right now. Yes, we do understand the limitations of using a squat to assess a squat, but <laughs> you can't argue with the fact that it gives you information. Like it gives yeah. you a, a starting point. It gives you some solid information to start, right? So we, I, I'm thinking about like now personally, when I've, when I've done assessments, generally speaking, the first iterations of the program are way better and we can get positive adaptation way faster. Um, and I've, Thing about movement assessment. I mean, I've done I've done full blown FMS. I've done just overhead squat. I've done like you're saying, like just watching someone squat, lunge, and do a push up. Um, I've done cars at the individual joint level. I've had I've worked with PTs who have assessed segmental movement. So like literally with a godiometer measuring range. 
like what makes the most sense for you. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like for mm-hmm. a lot of coaches, it's just going to be watching someone squat or having them perform an overhead squat with a PVC. Right. And that's a great start. Right. Like if, yeah. if you don't know what the hell you're going to do with individual joint measurements, then don't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like use an assessment that you know how to use and squats right. an easy one. Right. And I guess to put more context in, in my statements or I'm referring to the coaches who don't have the opportunity to have a one-on-one session prior to their individual. No, true. Um, yeah. You got 10, 15, 20 people walk into your class and you're like, I have Sheesh. no idea who these people are. Yeah. Uh, what do I do? And your warm up is now the assessment. They, the minute they walk in the room is your assessment. Hmm. Right. So just, you're just taking information at that point and now yeah. remembering it, writing it down, whatever it is. When you come back, now you have a little bit more information. Is dude's toe walking out, looking out to the side while you're, while he's walking towards you. All right. Remember that. Right. It, yeah. This is, you know, it, so those kind of things I think comes to mind when we're talking assessment, but not to go deep into the weeds of uh, motivational interviewing or whatnot, which yeah. I'd like to in the future. Exercise selection, bro. Like we were talking about this in the first uh, episode. I'm scrolling through IG. There's a lot yeah. of things there. There's a lot yeah. of cool movements. How do I filter things out and how do I understand as a coach or just somebody like I have, I'm sure clients of mine are listening to this too. How do I look at uh, an exercise and actually understand the value of it? And like, is it right for me? And does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that like, I, and I think about like, for me personally, when I've done that, like two, it, it goes wrong in two ways, right? Like first thing, first and foremost, like you said, I, I don't necessarily understand the context of that person that I learned the exercises is working in. And I don't understand like what the actual goal adaptation of the exercise is. Mm-hmm. Like so I'm thinking about like when I've done this in the past and where I see coaches go wrong. Second thing is, I don't know what the hell I'm coaching. <laughs> and that's like, that's a whole nother, like other layer to this onion. But like, more and more, especially having the opportunity to watch coaches coach and give them feedback on what they do, it's like, hey, bro, if if you don't know the ins and outs of this exercise, don't put it in your program. And like, I think I can think back on so many times where I've been like, all right, team, uh, we're gonna be doing this dumbbell snatch variation. You're gonna kind of uh, put the dumbbell like this. And then you're going to kind of uh, jump up and, and like almost put it over your head like this. And then let's get it. And I don't know what's happening. I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know what they need to be doing or what they need to be thinking about. I'm giving no cues. It's just like, I hope you all can organize your bodies in a way that looks something like this. Because yeah. I don't know how to coach you here. Right. And that's so like those, those two major issues. Like, again, if you can't coach the hell out of it don't put it in the program and uh, unless you're like, you know, trying something new mm. and experimenting a little bit, and, you know, but if you don't know the intent, don't put it in your program. I agree. To challenge that. Mm. I feel like if I, if I'm scrolling through IG and I see a nice fun movement, right? All right. Yeah. Teaching a class tomorrow. My people will do this. And if they do it, why would I need to look at that? Why would I even listen to you and be like, they're doing it, bro. Why, why would I need to know yeah. the ins and out of it? So just, just yeah. curious to hear your thoughts there. If they're literally just doing the exercise of what I've learned and what I've showed them. All right. It's in the program. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess if you, if you, I mean, if you can abide by the first rule there, like if I, if I understand like, and if it's just like a slight variation on the movement, like, it's like, hey, I'm doing a reverse lunge, and I see someone doing a reverse lunge with a slider. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting, right? Or if it's a different way to load a rear foot elevated split squat. I don't know why I'm stuck in these weird lunging patterns. Um, <laughs> but, like, if it's something drastic, like, if it's, like, we're going from dumbbell bench press to, like, bamboo bar, banded kettlebell, earthquake bench press, well, like, whoa, what, is, what has changed? What has happened? But I'm like, I'm just thinking about like the models that we use as coaches. Like when I'm, when I'm coaching, when I'm assessing someone's movement in front of me, like first things first, I need to understand, like technically speaking, how the movement needs to be performed. 
like what am I looking for at every level? So like at each joint, and then like from a from a pattern like or from a pattern standpoint, like how does this movement need to be coordinated, and why? So like what what ultimately does this give us, right? So like for the reverse lunge or reverse lunge with a slider variation, right? Does this help me coordinate movement better? Does this help me load that front hip better, mm-hmm. right? Like what what is this helping me do, and why? Cool. Now I can work backwards from there and see what my member's doing. What are they supposed to be doing? And now I have a better plan of attack for bridging that gap and helping them learn the movement better versus like if I'm just throwing it out there. But like, yeah, like they might get it. They might all get it right away. I give 10 people in class and might all get it right away. But I, I'd be willing to bet that like every time you throw out a new movement at them, that's not going to be the case. Mm. Yeah. No, I like that because... I'm thinking back, I used to do that a lot. You know, I'd find cool exercises and people would do it. And if I look back, if people challenge me, I'm like, oh, uh, I don't know, fun. Like, I'm not comfortable with saying that because I'm a professional at what I do. And people look to me with professional advice based off of the education that I've been through. So I think uh, there's a lot of value in understanding the nuances of exercise selection. Yeah. And I don't think we would know what's right if we know what's wrong. Like mm. some, to kind of wrap up what you mentioned, like the, yeah, knowing yeah. the technical proficiency of what's required for this exercise. Okay, let's define what good looks like. Yeah. Otherwise, we won't know what bad looks like. Yeah. Mm. That's facts. Right. So it's it's a it's one of those things. If we look on, um, if we look at any exercise, for me, I'm still looking at some movements that I put in my own, my own programs. Yeah. What can possibly go wrong with yeah. this? How do I prevent it? And is it even worth it at that point? Yeah. Um, so this is a kind of, I'm just like, I'm trying to get my brain working there because a lot of the things that we see on social media specifically mm-hmm. are very cool. They're very entertaining. They might, our members might actually like it once we, implement it yeah. like oh that was fun all right that was fun and i wouldn't want to hang my hat on putting a exercise in a program if this my success metric is when my members say it's fun because <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun yeah but are we actually helping towards the goal of probably being healthier humans which i'm assuming more often times than not they come to us to want to be healthier and that might I mean something different for everybody but yeah yeah i can no, go on and on with that one but hey, this is just some interesting thoughts there that's bars yeah no, no I, challenge. And, and i don't like yeah i don't want to like vilify again we talked about it in the first episode and, and kind of walk the tightrope <laughs> and i want to continue to try to walk that tightrope of like not vilifying everything on social media and like like there's nothing wrong with using that as a form of education like obviously mm-hmm. i think there's there's a lot of issues with it, a lot of limitations with it but but like it's helping you kind of learn and grow and try new things so i yeah. think like there's there's some ways that you can you can go wrong with it and there's some ways that you can use it as a tool that actually helps you grow right and and, and now thinking back to like where we see coaches go wrong right and ways it can go wrong it is actually initially like not a bad thing so like oftentimes when i'm working with a brand new coach like i'm talking fresh out of college or like in the game for a year or two i'm always like dude just like here's a good ass program like mimic it like that like there's there's you don't know what you don't know yet Mm -hmm. like there's Mm -hmm. so there there is so much stuff out there right right so like here's a good program that's going to be specific to a goal it's going to progress over time and it's like relatively straightforward and there are movements that you know so you can focus on engaging with the people you work with whether it's one-on-one or in a group and coaching the hell out of all those movements so like here you go here's your template here's your sample whatever and then they just like keep mimicking and keep mimicking and keep mimicking and keep mimicking and never get back to like the why is the program set up this way part and same thing on Instagram. Like again, like younger coaches, like find someone you trust, you you you, you follow, and you can mimic some of the stuff they do, mimic some of the programs they write, 
but at some point you have to get to the why of like all right why are you using this movement why are you setting up the program in mm-hmm. this way mm-hmm. is that is that something that you see like that you'll typically have coaches start out with with a good program yeah like like mimicking like that yeah i mean they got to start somewhere right everybody yeah. starts somewhere and i'm think i'm just thinking about the words good program and yeah for me if i were to define that i think we could all agree a good a good program should implement things that a human body should be able to do assuming there are yeah. no previous injuries right can they yeah. push can they pull can they squat hinge carry things mm-hmm. to a certain degree yeah um and then as you know time moves forward now you'll understand the nuances of that program based off of the individual based off what they tell you and now it starts to be a little bit more personalized uh, through those conversations but generally everybody has to start somewhere mm-hmm. um, and a good program should you know appreciate those things of what a human body should do yeah or can do or if they they can't do any of that that's going to train them to do that mm-hmm. uh, but yes i think even i started with a general template which generally worked yeah but then people came with me with specific things so why would a general program yeah. work for something for a specific person yeah then that, that, that's and that's in in lies the issue with with the mimicking right if we're if we're just operating without understanding the yeah. principles i uh yeah. want to call out one more one more thing that actually just came to mind i know we talked about on episode one like my background in olympic weightlifting um, but I also see a lot of a lot of younger coaches do this as well, where it's like, yo, I love X thing. Like I'm a runner, I am a cyclist, I am a powerlifter, I am a bodybuilder, I am a physique athlete. So I'm just gonna give them movements that I like to do. And on you know, devil's advocate devil's advocate on one end, like if you know those movements. And you can coach the hell out of them. And you understand, technically speaking, what's required to perform them well. All right. Like, not, like not, not saying they're bad movements. The issue then becomes when it's the answer for every problem. Mm-hmm. Like, you're an athlete. You got 60-year-old Judy. She's back. You got, oh, you, got all, Judy? You, got all these, you got all these different people coming in. And now it's just like we're getting the same. Right. exact exercise over and over and over and over and they become the solution to every problem that shows up in your gym um like that's where things can start to to go wrong from mm-hmm. an exercise selection standpoint yeah no i agree i i think if people come to you for your specific skill set um and your expertise of a yeah. bodybuilder of a um, different distance yep. runner and yeah, it's not it's not bad that. it's not bad like it's not a bad thing to be like is it niched or niche? I never like I rarely say that word out loud and now I'm just what are we what are we doing here? Man. What are we doing? What are we one way in one episode and then another way? Yeah. Another episode. Let's go so niche today. Niche it feels like a niche day. Right? It's a niche day. <laughs> it's a niche day. So oh, it, it's not bad to have your niche. Like and I guess from a market standpoint, specializing is probably good. Because yeah. there's a lot of coaches out there. There's a big wide world of uh, of fitness. But like like it's like you said, if someone's coming to you like, bro, I want to get jacked. That's all I want. Mm-hmm. Then you're golden. But, like, knowing that, like, especially in the environments that we work with people in, like, that's not often the case. Or that's not always the case. So that's a good call out. It's, right. It's, it's true. It's not always the case. But now I'm just curious. Because I've never worked with a lot of people in those industries mm-hmm. or specialties. Mm-hmm. Would you disagree that? they're not appreciating health as much or let me rephrase that question do you think all of all those specialists Mm -hmm. would you agree that health is still in the back of their minds somewhere like if they're still looking to compete in a physique competition yeah you know here's the programs here's the things that i like to do which might actually work yeah at some point i'm sure health being a healthy person at the after this fact is still a philosophy in there for for the coach or for the client for the coach for the coach i would hope so and i i would argue that 
it should uh but like it's it's a double edged sword right so like physique example especially for female physique athletes like you are mm. dieting down to the point where you're like stopping your menstrual cycle because you're getting so lean like that is not yeah. good that is not good for you even for even for men like yeah not not as extreme but they're still dieting down to a point when they step on stage they're mm -hmm. at a, if they're at a high enough level where it ceases to be good for them um yeah. but like I, I i think there's gotta be some give and take there's gotta be phases right so like yeah. cool like that you, you compete and then maybe we go back to like just regular training having fun maybe improving mm -hmm. range of motion improving your movement options whatever like being a little more way looser with our diet right just making sure our health markers are where they should be mm -hmm. like things like that um but like i i the thing i always say to clients who who want to or coaches and clients really who either work and especially or want to reach a super specific goal is like are they getting paid to do this mm. so like i remember working with uh gosh i think it was an accountant for for novant and uh he wanted to compete in a powerlifting competition and moved like i just so bad so so could barely could barely hit depth of, of a squat had mm -hmm. pain in both of his shoulders every time he bench pressed heavy. So it's like, all right, well, I, I, we want to support you on this journey. Like, we want to help you get there, but like, you're not getting paid to do this. So, like, let's be realistic about the goal mm. and take time and do it right versus yeah. rush to get, like, sure, we can load the hell out of you and make you stronger. But then what happens after that competition? You show right. up, you, you complete your meat, you're broken, you feel like garbage, right? Like, from an exercise selection standpoint, let's do things right now that help set you up for that mm -hmm. versus trying to, you know, square peg around a hole, force you into the movements that you can't perform. Right. Right. So like in that case, health was in the back of our mind, Yeah. but I, I, I've, I've, I've seen it and I would assume there are situations where health is not in the back of, of, of coaches' minds when they're choosing exercises and when they're also writing their, their, their kind of broader program. Yeah. It's good. That's, those are interesting, interesting yeah. thoughts. And if, yeah. if there's a coach listening that specializes in that, I'm really curious to just understand a little bit more about the thought, philosophy behind yeah. certain program designs. Uh, but to kind of take us back with mm. bring it back, bring it back with with the uh, exercise selection. Um, what's your what's your process, bro? Like in terms of looking at exercise, if you got a, if you're just working with an individual. Mm -hmm. general goal which i hear a lot like uh, they, they just want to be fit all right another conversation but yeah we just need they want different exercises they literally tell you they want different exercises how do we go about that yeah no i uh i i think recently i've been stealing a lot from from max schmarzo stuff um uh, strong by science on instagram i might have gotten that wrong but we can put it in the show notes uh but um also, if you listen to this, you definitely know who Max Schmarzo is. But, um, but I, I like his kind of process where, it, where it's just like all these exercises that we do are, are a specific means to an end, right? So for a strength example, right? Like if someone comes to me and they want to get stronger, cool. Like let's understand why. So like let's say it's for their sport or so they can produce more force when they're accelerating, like whatever, they probably wouldn't say that to you, but whatever it is, like whatever we uncover as the reason, <laughs> like now my lower body movements, like my goal is improving the ma maximum amount of force that my lower body muscles can produce in a pushing pattern. So like, I'm just going to choose an exercise that does that, knowing that a lot of exercises do that, right? I can back squat, I can hack squat, I can um, trap bar deadlift. I can reverse lunge. I can do a heavy step up. I can do a Hatfield squat. I can do low bar squat, high bar squat, front squat. Like, I, there's so many different options for me. So then now I get to that point. Mm -hmm. And it's like, cool. I know why I'm doing this exercise. I know what purpose this exercise serves. And then from there, back to your assessment point, it's like, cool. Who's the person in front of me or who's the people in front of me? what can I coach? Well, like, what am I comfortable coaching? And then the last piece, which is, which is arguably 
in my opinion, what drives a lot of exercise selection or most of exercise selection is the practicality. So like, do you have the equipment to do this well and not set up like 40 things or have to rearrange your gym? Uh, do you have the space to do it well? Mm -hmm. And then does it practically make sense within the flow of the session or, or more importantly, does it practically make sense within the flow of a class? Mm. Right. So I, 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 many times I've done this where it's like, we have three squat racks, we have 15 people and I'm trying to back squat mm -hmm. heavy. And it's like, you know, we got five groups at each rack. Everyone's on top of each other. We have five different exercises. We're still recycling through all just so we can back squat heavy. And it's like, is this, <laughs> is this worth it? Cause this is a mess. Right. right. So like, and it's taking up a ton of time and people are, people are having a terrible experience here. It's like, is this exercise worth it? Quoting me. <laughs> yeah, Quoting yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that, that's kind of like, that's kind of my full, my, my full process. Is there anything, anything mm. there you, you would add or, or, or take away for you? I mean, th those are like great starting points just to keep us in check. And when I say us, myself, when I'm scrolling through things, I'm like, yeah. I think those having a North star of yeah. some sort of, does this make sense for me is probably a good way about to filter or as yeah. we start to filter things out. Cause we have to, we yeah. as in, in our profession have to filter information out and how do we do that mm -hmm. with, you know, this, this, this wide uh, variety of, of socials of, of people, of books, of, of everything that we have available is to, to help us with our goals. So I think, understanding your filters of could be your coaching philosophy of you know those bullet points of what do you stand on yeah. that way once you have things that come to your doorstep you see through your feed does it now align with um those north stars yeah. uh, of yours if you will so no i think those are good places to uh to start off from um, yeah but now when we're actually Looking at exercises, mm -hmm. what what do you think stands out for a lot of coaches or for a lot of people for members? Like, why would mm -hmm. you, why do you think a lot of members or coaches say like, "I like this exercise"? Yeah, that's why a. Would, what's that? That's a yeah, good question. Yeah. I, like, I, I, I'm trying to hit you with it. It depends. Um, I'm thinking about for myself. So, like, when I tend to fall into when I've fallen into that trap, like. I think it's like there's nothing wrong with having exercises you prefer as long as you have a rationale behind it that that isn't like because I like it <laughs> as long for, as you have a rationale reason. yeah if you have a rationale that makes sense like like generally speaking I I love to use trap bar deadlift as as a primary lower body pushing movement with people with with gem pop athlete like with whoever I work with like I feel like easy as hell to teach immediately can load again like yes bring us a smoke if you want to argue about if a back squat or a trap bar deadlift is easier to teach uh but like easy to load easy to teach generally speaking requires less ankle dorsiflexion requires less range of the shoulders like get into a good position like if i'm barbell back squatting um it's easier for me to maintain thoracic ex extension and maintain like a relatively neutral spine position so like there's nothing wrong with 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 liking that specific exercise, yeah. but like I think it's important to know why. Like why? Like right. why do you have that preference? And like that 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 is why I have that personal preference. Yeah. But like I don't I, I don't know if it's I, I've seen it a couple of different ways. Like I've seen it where coaches just like, hey, this exercise feels good for me, so everyone's gonna get it, and like you're I, i'm now i'm not serving you even if it's not necessarily an ego thing it's like hey i i like this exercise a lot and i'm genuinely trying to help but i'm not asking you or assessing you and seeing like what you like yeah i think people can follow that and then like the novelty piece like i i, I don't i i i think coaches like kind of want to do sexy stuff and i don't know yeah. why 
maybe they're bored or maybe they're they're doing it for socials but like they want to do the the sexy thing like oh i mean everyone's doing this variation so like i gotta be doing this variation yeah it's like this is all made up (laughs) you can do you can do whatever you want to do as long as it's serving a specific goal right no what are are your thoughts on that i think people i agree with with all the things that you mentioned i think if i were to sum it up based off of my experience i think people like doing novelty exercise because they can do it Mm. they can literally just do it yeah like if you go to a gym talk to a member who's been there who goes there every day they don't really have a trainer i've I've talked to many of them they tend to do the things that they're good at yeah and then all right i'm gonna do what i do i leave and it's that's they like doing it so i think when it comes to exercise selection when we try things, which we should always do, we should try things as coaches. Yeah. You know, if you see it, do it, try it, experiment, understand the nuances of it um, through through time. Uh, but I think ultimately, I think we like it because we like, we can do it. Like that shit. All right. Yeah. That do is more. Fair. That's right? a fair point. That's we like the point. challenge. I think humans like challenge. We like competition. Yeah. So it's like, oh, shoot. And if you can't do it, I think that's another reason for people to like it. Like, I want to do that. Yeah, I want to be able to do it's, that. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for my goal, but I want to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's right? that. That's that's. I now I'm like immediately thinking about about times that I've done that. But yeah, like, how can we keep the goal the goal with our exercise selection? Like, yeah. our exercise selection's got to serve a purpose of the 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 whole theme of the program or the theme of the phase, right? Like, if my goal is hypertrophy. And this crazy Bosu ball exercise isn't necessarily supporting that. Mm-hmm. And is my goal really hypertrophy? Right. Right. Because my actions aren't supporting what I'm saying at, at yeah. that point with my, with my exercise selection. But for, but for you, like when you see a new exercise or, or a coach is like, yo, JT, have you ever tried this variation? Like what is that your process for, uh, is that your process for, for trying and implementing new things like experimenting with yourself? More, yes, um, to answer that question, I think if a member or a coach says, hey, have you tried this variation? I'll literally just do it. Okay, yeah. let me try it. Won't question it. Let me do it. Let me try it. And then from there, as I do it, now I've already experienced it. With my, or experienced it. <laughs> I already <laughs> did it. I tried it. Yeah. You know, um, I was on my own. Um, experiment and now i can understand the nuances of that so my process is literally just doing it and yeah. can i be confident in coaching it if i have to coach it um, yeah. before but i will never really just look at an exercise and automatically put it in somebody else's program yeah. unless their goal is to, like throw any exercise at me i want to do it okay yeah. then it makes sense yeah right? with a little so, challenger. Um, yeah, I think everybody might have a, a subconscious way of, of going about exercise selection. I think at the end of the day, make it conscious. Yeah. Um, understand why things are the way they are. Um, and you don't have to sit down and write a, a dissertation on that. It's just more of just reflect a little bit. Do it, you know, understand it. Why, why are you doing it? Why is that person in front of you need to do it? Um, does it make sense? Then cool. Right? If, yeah. If this. If Joe over there wants to do stuff on both on the Bosu ball, and that's literally his goal, yeah. Any Bosu ball stuff works, Joe. Yeah, shout out Bosu Joe. You know what I'm saying? Bosu Joe <laughs> knows the vibes. But yeah, like I, I think like to to try to sum everything up. Like when you look at your program and you're reviewing it before you you deliver it to whoever you're working with, every movement in there there should be rationale behind it. So like. Why did you choose squat as your lower body pushing primary? Why did you choose back squat over goblet squat over front squat? Like you should have a rationale as to why you're doing it. And then beyond that, the exercises you select should serve the the goal, right? So whether the goal is getting out of pain, right? Well, my exercises should serve that goal. Whether the goal is getting stronger, right? Feeling more athletic, like whatever it is, your exercises should support that goal in some meaningful way. Now there, there are certainly times where it's not supporting the main goal, maybe it's supporting a tertiary goal. So kind of like we talked about if the goal is powerlifting, 
but you can't hit a competition depth squat, well then my mobility exercises, they're non-specific to powerlifting, but they're specific to you being able to power lift. Mm -hmm. right? So there's a purpose why I have hip mobility exercises and, and squat pattern exercises in your program. It serves your goal at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So like, why is it there? Does it serve the goal? Great starting point. Like for, for, for coaches now and like literally every single exercise, why is it there? Does it support my member, my client's goal? Like yeah. if you can just start doing that as your reflection prompt, like you're probably going to find a lot of things. You're like, I don't really know why the hell I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you find a lot of things that, that, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And just to add to that, if you have no skin in the game, if you're a new coach and mm -hmm. you're able bodied, um, you should probably demo it. You should probably be able to do it. For, yeah. You know, yourself, um, or if you, if you're injured, or if you just can't for whatever reason, um, you should probably have somebody in the class know how to do it. So I think that's that's one piece too when it comes mm -hmm. to exercise selection. Um, another reason to try it is yeah. if there's something that you like, try it. Make sure you know how to do it. Make sure you look good doing it. Mm. Um, and then you can start from there. But um, no, I think you wrapped it up really well there. But before we close out, I do want to close out with the, the speed it. round. Bro. Oh my goodness! A speed round. Just how so, you, this, this how you want to do this? This how is this that. I have a, I have a nice list uh, of things. I'm just gonna toss them to you. We can do a speed mm -hmm. round on me next time. Oh um, baby, nice list. You can go. It's a speed round, so answer quick. If you want to add uh, nuance to it, you're welcome to. But you can just give A or B. You ready for it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to hold myself to like w one set like a brief sentence not like a phil nash run-on sentence but like a a quick why let's get it i'm nervous all i'm right. sweating all right first one easy hey, run that barbell or trap bar oh i know i just said i like trap bars a lot but i'm gonna go barbell because you can do a lot of stuff with a barbell okay so many things okay. so okay. and you can snatch it <laughs> just yeah, throwing can, away can... everything we talked about <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, dumbbell or kettlebell? Kettlebell. I think kettlebell. I'm going kettlebell. I, 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 yeah, kettlebell. Kettlebell. Okay. I can't think of a why right now. I just like kettlebells. Right. I think. Oh, good. <laughs> I think you I'm like feeling. It, like I think it, you can do more with the kettlebell. If you like it, you like it. Can't complain with that. I think it's a little more versatile. I think. Machines or cable machines? Ooh, I'm going to go left here. Mm, are we counting Kaiser's and cable machines? Let's call Kaiser's cables. No, I was, I was going to say machines, but if we're, if we're throwing Kaiser's mm. and cable machines, I, I got to go. I got to go Kaiser's. Again, like, I forgot they're the best, but like, um, I was going to say machines because I, I think they're criminally underutilized. Like, serve a great purpose a lot of people get a great training stimulus and it's just very easy to use and it's hard yeah. to mess up uh, but i'm gonna go i'm gonna go cable machines with kaisers included again the range of options that you can do on like a kaiser is crazy um and it lets people train power at, at any level so like i could have mm -hmm. a pro athlete i could have judy we can train power shout we out train judy speed. we're gonna get shout you out right judy one more time you ain't right, right. <laughs> no cable love it love it all right a few more here um trap bar deadlift or a front squat Ooh, trap bar deadlift trap bar deadlift every day of the week like every day every day all right 10 by 10 i don't want to hear people being like oh my wrist hurt nah trap bar deadlift <laughs> fair fair um machine gun or a foam roller i'm gonna go i'm gonna go the old gun uh because in my experience and in my personal experience people will do that <laughs> mm, that's fair people like that more so Stay probably the, probably a relatively similar output but i'm, I'm yeah so I'm, I'm gonna go with the old massage gun. consistency consistency yeah, they'll do it consistently stay strapped uh last one last one run it run it, run it. you have one exercise to do for the rest of your life what's gonna be Oh, for me personally. You personally. 
Oh my goodness. I don't I don't know if my I don't know if my left shoulder will take it, but I'm gonna snatch. Damn. I know. All I, don't right. know if, I don't know if my left shoulder will take I'm gonna snatch I'm gonna snatch uh, two reasons. One, like I feel like you can get a decent like strength training stimulus out of it, whether it's just like maintaining strength. Um you can train like quote unquote power with it. So we're getting improvements in like rate of force development or at least late stage rate of force development when we're training. Um, but honestly the, and it's, and it's total body, but like the, the larger reason is because I've never been, I wasn't okay at it, never been great at it. And for me, I know like one of the things that keep me training is mastering something, Mm. right? I like getting better at something technically over time. So like, that's why I'll try things like sprinting. So I'm super into tennis or playing tennis again. Like I'm getting better at movement. Like and I mm-hmm. feel myself getting better and I love that process of movement mastery. Yeah. So for me, like a snatch is like, well, compared to like sprinting or playing tennis, it's super simple, mm-hmm. but like there's so many moving pieces. You can always get better. You can always get more consistent. So like, as far as that lift goes, like that would keep me training. I could train the lift forever and always have something to work on. Um, so I'd always be chasing that goal yeah. of mastery, knowing that I never get it. So like those two, those two reasons would, I, I gotta mm-hmm. go, I gotta go snatch. I know that I was longer that. than a sentence. Yeah, I love that. I, th- I think that's a good, um, place to kind of wrap our whole episode up just because mm-hmm. I think there's a certain level of uh, appreciation we should have in the sense of mastery, right? When it comes to yeah. exercise selection specific, sometimes it's, it it really feels good to be able to um, challenge yourself on something yeah. that you have already um, proved yourself that you can do. For example, a lunge. If yeah. you do a body weight lunge, all of a sudden you put a dumbbell on both hands and you do it yeah. over time. There's a lot of um, you know human appreciation. I think from yeah. an individual level that that can come out of that and which can uh, give you consistency, right? So I think those things come to mind when I'm looking at the younger coach of myself. Yeah. You know, I think subconsciously, if I were to look back, if I were to add, or if I have a reason to have you know, exercise selection and fun exercise selections for my members, I think part of that was understanding. It was cool to see people yeah. do things that they did not know they can do. And you know, without making... Uh, without losing the big picture, without straying away from the big goal. I think that's something that I think we can definitely think about and appreciate uh, with whoever's in front of us as we're talking about exercise selection. Your bars were, <laughs> were there, bro. Uh, but no, oh, I love, uh, appreciate I love you, bro. It was, that yeah, was a fun convo. Hopefully some people got some something out of it, uh, some whether nuggies. it be uh, so, some type of energy. You know, mm. it doesn't always have to be good energy. If I, if you felt some type of way about this, honestly, I want to chat with you. I, I like talking about. I like talking to people who do not have the same views as me. That's that's something I'm always striving for, bro. Just asking every every episode, just begging people smoke. to give us a smoke. I just... don't smoke, but I want the smoke. <laughs> begging want for it. the smoke. I hope I hope people uh, I hope people abide and, and give us the smoke. Please, so, yeah. please do. Got to keep it open mind. But uh, JT, where, where, where can people find you? CoachJT.MP3. About to be MP4 soon, maybe if they let me, because we can see video now. So what about you? <laughs> Next level. Uh, IG at Nashville. Uh, as always, episode two in the books. Thank you all for listening. Um, if you like the show, show love how you're supposed to. Um, give us a subscribe, share it with a friend, share it with your auntie, share it with the whole family. Uh, and if you love it, leave us a five star review, leave us a comment. And uh, yeah, if you want to give us a smoke, please give us a smoke. We would love please. to have a conversation. We, we, we are here to learn. We are here to learn. Um, send it to, to Judy. Shout out, Judy. Shout out, Judy. Uh, <laughs> we are here to push performance and um, get everybody get better. Mm. Mm. That's it. All right, y'all. Until next time. Peace. Peace. Mm.
Pop it, 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 pop it